All right, Shalom. Start first by giving all praise and glories unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Brakatai Yahweh, Brakatai Yahweh Shai. Call Halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Rakah Kodash. Double honors to the elder apostles at Great Millstone who rule well, taught us this truth. Greetings, salutations, and blessings unto the elect, the house of David, that will receive salvation. Shalom. And it's a special thing because the Spirit revealed unto the apostles and apostles down into the those that will be saved and that um, are um, going hard, man, for this truth, man. It open up their minds, you know, to this truth and not being caught up in black culture, not being caught up in, in, in the carnality and the naked eye. Now, these people right here, I'm showing you, you know. It looked like regular old Edomites. Now, I don't know about this woman, and it doesn't really matter. But this little kid right here that looks like an Edomite, that is a Jake. A so-called Negro, Latino, or Native American. You'd be like, what? He's blonde hair and blue eyed. That, you, you got to go beyond the flesh, man. You guys got to go beyond the naked eye. You got you to gotta dig into the spirit. You know? Because this young man's uh, father... Is him right here. That's that. That's that man's son and his wife. They produced a baby that looked like that, right? Now let me see if I can go back into this picture right here. I'm gonna try to blow it up so you can see. That's the same little boy and his dad, right? Well, this man in the middle, that's their dads. That's his brother. That's Blake Griffith, his dad, and their brother. And then that's his uh. Son or grandson, if you don't come down, zoom. That's the father line right there. Three generations right there, starting with this man right here, and then unto him and, and 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 Blake, and that's the great, that's the grandson. So you guys got to get over that, you know, the simplicity of thinking just because, uh, just because you you got uh, you lack pigmentation, or you're a confusion of faith that you're not an Israelite man. That this that this word isn't for you. There's brothers in Great Millstone now. You look around uh, the four corners of the earth and you'll see them in Great Millstone and they're pushing the word hard, just like they, you know, like an like a Issacharite would, like a Gadite would, like a, a, a Benjamite would, Judite, and so on and so forth, all the tribes. So not every Israelite is going to look like uh, uh, their dad right here, Mr. Griffin, right? They may look like Blake. They may look like... Blake's son, which I don't know his son's name, but I think you guys get the point. But they're all Jakes, man. I believe they're from the tribe of Benjamin also, matter of fact. You know? So I'm going to go into some scripts now. Starting right here. I'm going to uh, a parable. Because this right here, because of the, the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua given unto the apostles and elders, and from probably down from there, uh, the elder apostles, the apostles, elders, Salakia, and on down to us, we're able to understand this mystery. And uh, here's the mystery here in Matthew the 13th chapter, starting at the 24th verse. It says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like likened unto a man that soweth good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. So it was he just, you know, for you that, that don't understand how to break down this parable, you know, there was a good field, Israelites, and then somebody came in and put tares in there also, mingled the seed of the, of, of the people. Anyway, it says, but in like if you were doing a garden and you're planting uh, peppers and somebody comes in and put tomatoes in there, you're not going to know which is which until as it, it's going to break it down. But you're going to believe it's all peppers in there. Until one day you see a tomato pop up. You're like, whoa, what is this? Anyway, it says, but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth, then appeared the tares also. It says, so the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in, the, in thy field? From thence then had the tares. So when did the weeds get in there? When did the tomatoes get in there? You know, you planted peppers. You planted a holy... Yeah, have your attention, please. The safety and security. Yeah, anyway, so... um, Yeah, so it's like, hey, why is this all... The seed ain't pure no more. 
you know, it's been mingled, but the seed remains pure. It's just the way it looks isn't pure. We're going to get into that. She said, um, he said unto them, an enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, without then that we, without then that we go and gather them up. He, but he said, nay, lest while ye gathered up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Because the way this thing is set up, and you look at, you can't tell, like that little, that little boy, man, this little boy right here, right? Pull up. This little boy right here, man, you look like a regular little Edomite baby, man. You won't know until he develops into his manhood to where you can see the real spirit that's on that kid. Till he gets into a higher level. You wouldn't you wouldn't know. You would never guess that they came from that man right there. This man right here. You'd never guess that. But if you uproot him, you're gonna be tearing up some of the wheat. And this is a weedy right here. As his dad is. You know, I, I I looked up a picture of his mom, but I mean she looks like an Edomite lady too. She might be a Jake, who's to say? Who's to say? But the most important thing is that the seed goes through the men. So going back into the parable, it says, um, back at 29, it says, But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather the, up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. You tear them up. It says, um, Let's both grow together. Let both grow together into the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say, to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. And the purpose of that is, you'll know fully who's who. You'll fully know who's who. This is a tomato now. And these are peppers over here. Or this is the wheat over here. And those are, over there, those are just weeds. Throw them away, man. Tares. Throw them up, bind them up, and burn them. You know, because a tear also could could uh could be dark skinned. A tear could be dark skinned. It don't. Have, it could look like any other nation, man. It don't mean that they have to be um dark skinned. Just to, you know, like Lenny Kravitz, right? Edomite. It's an Edomite. Kravitz is a, is a Jewish name, a Khazar name, right? So I got another one. Uh, let's go to the book of. <clears throat> Romans of course Romans 11 we're going to start near the top um, and here's a here's where you guys lose it right here man you guys don't understand a big picture but what I just read in the picture of great Blake Griffin and his, and his son which are excellent examples of this tells the truth uh, Romans 11 and 2 it says the most high has not cast away his people which he foreknew because in past times they were dark skinned like Blake Griffin's father. You know? But when you start mingling seed either with the Greeks or, or with with whatever nation, we've been in captivity under all these nations. So when we we made we begin to take on their features and look like them, even until these Edomite uh, the captivities, you know, that we've been in, where we start our seeds start um, degenerating, so to speak, our pigment. We start losing pigment. It says, uh, then we begin to look like them, and then even furthermore, taking on their customs. It says, what ye not, hold on. It says, um, back at Romans 11, 2, it says, have the Most High, hath not cast away his people which he foreknew, what ye not, what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession of the Most High against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars. And I am left alone and they seek my life. Now let me um, jump down because the thing about this is the Most High didn't cast away his people. Neither did he throw away the wild olive tree. He's grafting, grafting in the wild olive tree back, which are those weedies that look like tares. But they're in their spirit, they're, they're, they're the real Israelites. Um, let me see. Let me see right here. Yep. Uh, let me see. Yes, one I want. Yep, right here. Eleven, verse eleven. No, matter of fact, verse ten it says, uh, "And David said, Let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always." Yeah. 
because he, he he hid his face from us, from us as a whole nation. And then when he begins to bring us back, those Jakes that know that they're Israelites are gonna marvel at the fact that these ta these these tares or these um, they're not actually tares, they're actually Jakes, but these um, Wheaties or these uh, Gentile or these other heathen looking confusion of face Israelites are being grafted in, but they're going to believe that they're Edomites, they're going to believe that they're Asians, they're going to believe that they're Africans, they're going to believe that they're every other nation under the sun. Even Edomite looking tares, right? But they're actually Jakes, they're actually Israelites in their spirit. Their father line goes back unto unto the, the to Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So it says, um, verse 11, it says, I say then, have they stumbled at that they should fall? The Most High forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. It says, because they, that's why they get jealous. They see these other heathens looking like they can be saved, but they're really Israelites also because they're simple and carnal. It says, now the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles how much more their fullness for the for I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles I magnify mine office now the point is the fullness of the Gentiles those are still Israelites you got to get past that man there the, I believe if I go into the blue letter the word there is Helen let me see if I can go into it real quick before I get interrupted again Bear with me one second. Come on, come on. See here. One second. Okay, um, yep. So the Gentile ethnos, right there. G. <clears throat> this is uh, Strong's G fourteen eighty four. Ethnos is the word Gentile right there. It says ethnos, probably from. It says a race, i.e., a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, by implication, pagan, Gentile, heathen nation, people. Right. That's where it's going off. All right. Okay, now it says a multitude associated or living together, a company, a troop, a swarm, uh, the human family, a tribe, a nation, a group. In the Old Testament, foreign nations worshiping the true power, pagans, Gentiles. Paul used the term Gentile Christians. Christians meaning Israelites. Salakia, so like, um... <laughs> Whenever you, I'm at the plantation trying to push this lesson out right quick. You know, I had a quick break, but it seemed like nobody wants to say that to you until you get in the spirit. But anyway, um, uh, back at uh, the definition of ethnos in the blue letter, it says, um, in the Old Testament, uh, foreign nations not worshiping the true God, pagans, Gentiles. Right, Paul used the term for Gentile Christians. Why? Because they were Israelites. That's why. Because they were of the same stock. They just looked like the other nations. In the Thayer's Greek lexicon, it says a multitude associated or living together, a company, troop, swarm. Um, number two, it says a multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus. That's why he used that as, a, um, as Christians. Which the Christians are the anointeds, which are the Israelites, the chosen people of the Most High God. All right, let's see what else it says. Race, nation, yet the nation of the Israelites. Um, used in singular of the Jewish people, the Israelites. Let's see if it has anything else I can bring up real quick. Uh, yep, it says a marginal reading, says, uh, and very often in plain contradistinction to the Jews. Meaning, it kind of contradicts because they're 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 um they're supposed to be Gentiles, but they're actually the Israelites, even of Gentile Christians. Paul uses it, right? So when you go back to it, that's what the that's what this guy is here, man. 
that's why it was even a, a beautiful thing that the spirit had him do that uh that uh that commercial had him do the commercial with uh had him do the commercial as Cornelius because his son looks like a straight Edomite his wife may or may not have been an Edomite I don't know who she is but this dude is not an Edomite man and neither is his son you know let's see if I can bring these together yep them two them two them some Jake's right there man because the seed comes from him so you guys need to get past that and get over that this is clearly what it is you see how this man how athletic this man is jumping out the gym and whatnot. Spirit, when you hear you speak, that's a Jake, man. So with that, I'm gonna close out. So, giving all praise and glory to you. How about you, Hashem? With that, how about you, Hashem? With that, by Hashem, Hakodash for Ka. Double honor to the elder apostles that great millstone who rule well. Green salutations unto the elect. Shalom.